Hi, I'm Parker. And I'm Mike. And, and this, this is, is the, the Graphic, Graphic Novel, Novel Podcast. Podcast. Welcome to our new podcast on the art of the graphic novel. Mike is the author of 10 books and produced Comics TV, which was a weekly TV show on comics for seven years back in the 90s. Back in the olden days. <laughs> to the, uh, together, we produced Northwest Brew Talk about the beer industry in the Northwest for two years. Now we're back, and this show is all about graphic novels. All right, how's it going this week, Parker? Pretty good, pretty good. How about you? I'm good. So, I've uh, got some beer. I'm going to talk about another book. Our homebrew. I'm drinking our homebrew. You're bring, drinking the homebrew? I am. And what homebrew so was that? Tell, tell people what, what we brewed. An amber ale. An amber ale. Yeah. And Delicious. it's good? So fucking good. It's, uh, it's uh, almost two weeks from when we bottled it. It's been two weeks. It's been two weeks, and yeah. and it's probably closer to two and a half. Yeah. So last last night you said you thought the al alcohol content was higher than. Yes, it definitely <laughs> feels higher. I mean, I think part of it is just being fresh beer. Fresh you know? beer, fresh beer kills me. Talk about <laughs> truth serum. <laughs> Give me a fresh beer from a tap, and after two beers, I will tell you things that I shouldn't. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I've, I've, I've not had that experience with you. I've told you most of the things already. I t I'll <laughs> tell strangers things that I shouldn't. I remember, I remember when I was. I feel uh, that way too. I, I know I told you, but when I met the uh, one guy when I was trying to sell the uh, our bike messenger company, uh huh. And um, after a couple beers, I was like telling them about uh, your divorce, divorce, and everything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I was like, well, like, oh, fresh beer <laughs> didn't, sell, <laughs> didn't sell the didn't sell the uh, didn't sell the uh, uh, bike messenger company. To Not to him, him but I, did you? No, but I think that I think that <laughs> he's he, like, whoa, this guy's got issues. <laughs> no, I think, but I believe he, he became our uh, a, a partner. I think that was the one that became a partner. <sighs> Help us ship. Oh, ship. Yeah. he did car. He had a car messenger business or yes, something. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I think I remember that. All right. Oh, the joys of past lives. Yes. Coming back to haunt us. Yes, they do haunt us. They really weren't very many fresh beers around there. I'm impressed. No, with you. no, there were there was a few, uh, and that that was one of the good ones. They're still around too, and their their food was pretty good too. Same guy, running it. I believe. Well. It's a company, but I think it was the same brewer. Oh, okay. Th that was I. I can't remember his name at all. But I, I can't like, remember the can brewery. Picture him in my head. It's I can picture the brewery and the, the big. I know. Brick I know exactly and, what it is. And where? Yeah. Pearl Street. Pearl Street. Pearl, no. That's yes. Not what Pearl, I was Pearl Street Brewing. Pearl Street Brewing is what yes. you. Oh, that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking the other one. No, no, that's where I was. Okay, I see. I see. Oh, you're thinking of Flying Bison. Yes. Yeah. That's no, it. that's not it. That nope. that that name was not anywhere in my head. I I'm thinking like gears and grinding, and that was, <laughs> I was way nope. off. No, nope. but is Flying Bison still around though? Flying Bison still and Community around. Beer Works too. Those those are three you know major ones. They're still they yeah. they started it and they've stuck it out. Yeah, definitely. Pearl Street's still there, right? Pearl Street, yeah. Okay. And there's a bunch of other ones. There's it's grown a lot. That place is always packed. Yeah. Always. All right. Anyway, back this to week, the point yeah. of the show. This week, what are we what are we gonna do this week? This week, we read Calling Dr. Laura, a graphic memoir yes, by, by Nicole Georges. Yes, Nicole, Nicole J. J. Georges is a writer, illustrator, podcaster, and professor from Portland, Oregon. Her Lambda Award-winning graphic memoir, Calling Dr. Laura, was called Engrossing, Lovable, Smart, and Ultimately Poignant by Rachel Maddow. And Disarming and Haunting, Hip and Sweet, All at Once by Alison Bechtel author of Fun Home. Ala uh, Ayo, Dr. Laura, was an official selection at the Alumane, oh, I know, I know this word, International Comics Festival. It's not uh, in America, obviously. <laughs> Nicole's late, uh, her latest book, Fetch How a Bad Dog Brought Me Home, is the recipient of two Oregon board, uh, Book Awards and a Lambda nomination for Best Graphic Novel. So, uh, she's won other awards, Sunset uh, Sunburst Award for Excellence in Arts Education, and uh, she's done a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, she's been publishing her own zines and comics for 20 years and has toured the country extensively, including two appearances on Michelle's uh, T's sister spit tour. 
Nicole currently splits her time between Portland and Los Angeles with her Comirian best friend, Ponyo Georges. She's the host of the podcast Sagittarian Matters. Oh. All right. So, this book, why don't you give us a 20, little background? 20 years. Yeah. Well, That's doing zines, time. zines, and, and, and we've read a few people that, um, a couple of these people that do comics and stuff, they like have Patreons, and they like mm-hmm. to do little, you know, zines and stuff that they send out to their patrons. That's very cool. It is. Yeah. So, why don't you All tell right, us so we'll about just... the story? I think I'll just do this little quick, quick little uh, blurb here. In the tradition of Fun Home, a charming debut memoir about the psychic reading that spurs a Portland zinester to uncover an old secret about the family she never knew. Okay, that's like the elevator pitch. That like tells you absolutely nothing. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, who who wouldn't hear about a psychic reading that, that brings up your past and not want to be like, I want to read this book. Would you if did could you read that and be like no. someone to read that? really? No, it wouldn't do anything for me. Oh man, I but, I got me interested. You want me to keep reading? Should I keep reading the rest of it? No, I mean we'll we'll talk about the book. You you read it, so actually, yeah, you I picked mean, it up. You picked it up it. at Fanographics, right? That's right. Yeah, that when this, we were at my, their store. this may have been the first graphic novel that I oh it may that have. I read. It was the first one you you purchased. Yes, for sure. The first own. one yeah. I purchased on my own. Yeah. It, I, I think yeah, it's the first it one. Be. I think it's what got me into graphic novels, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Could be. And speaking of that, we Which are... is surprising because Dr. Laura was, you know, like, mm-hmm. it, it drew me deal. in. She it drew a... me in, even though Dr. Laura is this... Dr. Laura exact, The exact opposite of everything that I... Oh. No, that's not Dr. Laura. That's somebody else. You're thinking of Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth. Oh, yeah. Dr. Laura. <laughs> Dr. Laura. You're a whore and a slut. <laughs> I don't remember. Who's Close your goddamn legs. I don't remember. I know I've listened to Dr. <laughs> Laura, but I it's been probably 15 years. So I don't remember her. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking of Dr. Ruth. All right. But uh, quickly, before we get into this, um, we started receiving uh, preview copies and review copies from, I am from so some excited. publishers and from, and from some artists. Yeah. And uh, we're going to start doing those uh, the next episode. So stay tuned. Yeah, so we're gonna have some some brand new stuff to uh, to talk about, um, along with uh, some great you know, great other graphic novels that we're gonna discuss along the way. So, a lot of good stuff. So you know, keep listening to uh, the graphic novel podcast. Absolutely. All right, calling Doctor Lore. You had read it, so I said, okay, I'll read this one, and uh, it took me. Okay. I no, 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 it. no, no. You had already read it, so I figured I'd read it that way. We, you know, we'd have something, uh, something we could work on. And I read it. Uh, it took me a few days because it's a big book. How many pages have we got there? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, 106, 260. Yeah, 260. It's it's about the size of a heart stopper. But um, twice the size. I mean, twice. I mean, you know, heart stopper is like half the. Right. The, the, she does a lot of bigger photo, bigger pictures and stuff. <laughs> but uh, all yeah, right. Yeah. The actual physical, like it's a. The layout, there's Eight there's more stuff. Or something versus the, the heart stopper is a little bigger. You heart stopper is a little bigger, but it's it doesn't matter. Anyhow, <laughs> as soon as I started reading Let's this, I'm like I'm side. like, wow, this it, this I like it. I li- Amazing. I like the artwork. Her artwork is. Uh, I loved um, loved her artwork. It it's different in different parts. Sometimes she does a lot of like cross hatching and a lot of dark. You know, dark rooms and stuff like that. Well, it's definitely a different style when she was trying to um, talk when she was talking about her past. You know, when she was a child and stuff, she definitely drew differently. Than right that. then, it was more comicy, like uh-huh. a little kid kind of thing. I mean, not bad, like scribbly, but it was no, no, a no. different style, like more bright. And but I loved that she did that because it made it so clear that mm-hmm. she was talking about a different time period. Yeah, you're right. I'm, as we're skimming through here, there's a lot of that. Mm-hmm. But then when it was like modern time, it was completely different. It's a lot darker, a lot yeah. darker and like more adult like. Yeah. But her heart is great. I, I really like it. Me too. It was uh, uh, it was good. And she had some good like, you know, segue things where, where she really thought out how like a scene would play out, like where the characters would like change what they look like based on on what was happening uh-huh. Uh huh. It's pretty interesting. She has an anatomy of a mom fight. Um, this whole chart, and it's it, it's cool. The book. 
Did that did that anatomy of a mom fight feel like personal to you? Well, I related to this book unbelievably on, on multiple levels. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I saw my mother in big chunks of this. Yeah. Um, I, and I saw myself in parts of it too. Right. Um, how about you? Yeah, definitely. I, I spent a decent chunk of my childhood thinking that I must be adopted. And I don't know if this is like a queer thing. Like a lot of queer kids must think that they just don't fit into their family. And mm -hmm. so they must have been adopted. Like I had dreams of, I mean, daydreams of like finding my birth parents and realizing in my adult, have I not, never told you this? Huh? I think you did. Yeah. It's still, um, it's uh, still um, hard to understand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't understand it myself, but I, I remember clearly thinking that I was obviously adopted and that, that this was not my birth family. Why though? I, I just never felt like I fit. I never felt like it, it was the right fit for me. Like I didn't belong. I did. I wasn't like them. I didn't look like them. I didn't act like them. And so I wasn't, the right this wasn't the right family see i never i never really felt like that although as i got older i could look at my brother and sister who are both younger than me and they're only uh, like two years apart and my sister's i think four years younger than me yeah i think so and my brother and sister look a lot alike they both have straight hair yeah and they look very similar whereas i have curly hair and nobody else has curly hair my mother my grandmother had wavy hair my great grandmother had curly hair. It looked like I never met her, but cool. yeah, but you don't even know. I mean, I, I don't think your mother's hair was was my mother's hair was wavy. It wasn't curly. It was yeah, wavy. It, and I think that it, I mean, for all you know, it was a perm or something. Oh, she did that too. Exactly. But 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 there was wave in her hair. Her her hair was not straight. But it wasn't curly like yours. No. So I mean, I always wondered. But then I always got wait know, always or in your adulthood looking back. Uh, looking back, a lot of times. I mean, I don't remember my youth that much. Oh, okay. uh, to remember the details like that. But I remember thinking, I'm like, okay, you know, I, I don't know if I, you know, I don't look like the, everybody else. Yeah. But then one day I looked in the mirror uh -huh. and I saw my biological uncle, uncle, biological uncle. I looked in the mirror. I'm like, holy shit, that's him. Oh my <laughs> God. I do look like them. So I'm definitely related to them. So, you know. Maybe your siblings are actually different. Uh, they probably are. <laughs> they probably are. Fathers. Because my biological father was uh, was cheating all the time, so it's entirely possible that my mother was out. But then she would have to too. fuck the same person. She must have been fucking. I mean, if if no, this was she the had case, a long time boyfriend, so anything's possible. A long time boyfriend? You think like immediately after? I mean, I, I know no. you don't remember your. No, it's not possible. I, I, I it is possible, but I don't think so. Uh, they look a lot like. I, I would. Yes, but they could do they look different... like me? No, no, exactly. they don't. No, uh, other <laughs> exactly. than the nose. Exactly. They all got the nose. They don't look like me, though. No, they don't. No, they got the but nose. They're different, but they're different people. Every time, I mean, we don't have to go into the no, I know that. You know, DNA thing. Well, we're not them. going into DNA because this isn't CSI. No, so we need Piet here. Yeah. They know. Oh, that. yeah. Piet would they really know. <laughs> they, could, they could go on for probably 20 minutes and so, talk about that. I should say now that I love my family and they are definitely my family and I don't have any questions now if, as to whether I was adopted or not. But in my childhood, it would just, I just didn't feel like I fit. I think so, so the, the thing about, I guess the, the part about my mother is that um, in, in her book here, right. we find out that um, through the story that her mother is, is not the nicest person. Um, and what, what Nicole happen, ha, has done is she goes to this psychic when she's like 15, right? 15, 16. No, she was, a, she was an 18? adult. This oh. is, that was current. She went to a, a psychic radar, uh, bought it for her. For uh, her so what, she was, she wasn't that old though. 18, 20. No, 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 no. Much older. What? Are you sure? I mean, no, not much older. Sure. But. Okay, whatever. She was dating Radar at the time. Okay, so she goes to the psychic, finds out that um, the psychic says that uh, her father was not dead, her, right? Her biological father is alive. Was and alive. Al alive and well. That's what... Right. And she's like, how is that possible? My my dad's been dead since I was little. Right. So uh, nobody will ever tell her anything. As far as she knows, her father's been dead since she of, was Of colon cancer. Little. Of colon cancer. Since she was little. This is colon? the story. Yes, colon Pancreatic. Whatever it is. I think, sure I think it was colon cancer. cancer. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what she, that's what she knows. That's what she's grown up with. That's what she believes her whole life. 
And her mother, her mother is one of these people who clings to whatever she can. She finds a new boyfriend and she's like, oh, Nicole, he's great. We're going to, you're going to love him. Oh, look at here. Pete came over and he gave a gift to you. Are you going to thank him? And, you know, and it's that kind of stuff. And then mother calls her up one time and says, oh, we're going to the melting pot. And she's like, mom, that was supposed to be us. We were supposed to go to melting pot. Well, I'm going with Pete. You know, it was like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And these things throughout the book reminded me of my youth. Uh, hopefully my family doesn't hear this. And if they do, most, <laughs> most of them don't talk to me anyhow. So, um, but my mother, uh, after my biological father uh, was kicked out because he was abusive and a cheater and, and everything, um, my mother found a boyfriend, which was fine, except he didn't like us. He didn't give a shit about us at all. Three kids. Did three kids. Yes. Yeah. She had three kids. Um, and he didn't care about her, about us at all. He only cared about her. My mother was was good looking. She's in her young, you know, uh, early thirties, hmm. and this you know good looking Italian guy liked her, right? And she liked it, of course. And so there were times where uh, she went on fucking vacations. She went on vacations with him. Hmm. Never did us. Yeah. Never did anything. Where'd you with go? Us. Your aunt's house. Oh, yeah. yeah. One time, we all got bit by my aunt's dog. All of you? We all got bit at, by the dog at, at some point in time. I got bit to the point where they didn't know if I had a tetanus shot, so they had to take me to get to the hospital to get a tetanus shot. Holy shit. While my mother's on vacation. Holy having a good time in Canada. Tetanus. In Moss, do, Mossport, Canada. Do watching dogs, motorcycle races. Do, do dogs transmit tetanus? No, rabies. They wanted you said tetanus. Though. Yes, but they sent me for a tetanus shot. I don't know why. The dog had rabies, but they didn't. The dog did have rabies? No, no, no. The dog, <laughs> rabies shot. He had, he had had his rabies vaccination, so he didn't have rabies. <laughs> this fucking crazy dachshund that they had. That a bit children. Bit everybody. <laughs> Anybody's hand was in the way. Wait, I'm but. confused why you got a tetanus shot if it was I don't, because you of know what? dog bite. I, you know what? I don't know. Maybe I stepped on a nail. I don't, I don't, remember, <laughs> I don't remember all the things now, but my mother wasn't around at the time. That, that I do remember. Oh, and they so, didn't know, so they just gave you another one, just in case. Well, yes. That would make sense for yes, you to step on a rusty safe, nail or just something. Just to be safe. You know what? I don't fucking remember what That's happened. That's gotta be that. But, you really but, shouldn't but my, tell stories the point about is, your The point is, is the relationship there. Right, right. Okay. Well, we'll you know, go back to what the point was. Yeah, I mean, that's th that was the thing. It was like, and, and I knew this. I don't remember him ever, ever buying us gifts. Right. He had a motorcycle. He had a convertible. I don't remember ever riding the convertible. He took me on the motorcycle one time. Yeah. I mean, I was a, a little kid, but he took me on the motorcycle one time for like well, a, that a 15, time, I, I don't a 15 think mattered, minute ride. Right? At, the, at that time, it didn't matter that you were young going on a motorcycle. No. Did you even wear a helmet? Of course I did. <laughs> okay. There was a helmet law back in the 70s. Way back in the olden days. I think I make this joke every time we have a show. <laughs> Probably. But, but my point is that I can relate. I can relate that. You know, she had this this boyfriend, and then the boy to boyfriends. I almost said boy toys. The boyfriends were always more important than the children, and, and that was Nicole in in her book. She realized that you know the boyfriends were more important. Right. She she married one of them. Did she marry two of them? She, I think, two. Yeah, two of them, and one one of them she was with for a while. But I mean. Nicole didn't necessarily get along. They and she was the them. younger of, of Oh, she had the two siblings. There was a big gap there. So yeah. she was, I think, I think she said four. Oh man, I can't remember that. She was no, it was a bigger gap than that. She was just a baby when mm -hmm. her dad left. Right. And the she, when well, she her dad them, didn't leave. Like, or when her dad was kicked out. Yeah. Well, she didn't know this though. You know, I mean she's She's going through life just assuming that her dad's, you know, her dead. dad's been dead. And then this psychic tells her this crazy thing. And she's like, you know, is this really true and everything? Yeah. And then and then her girlfriend, there's multiple things going on in the story. Uh -huh. Then she, she realizes that she's a lesbian at some point. Right. She but she's not she, out to her mom. And she's not out to her mom. Because she has an older sibling who's also a lesbian. And that coming and out story yes, did not go Yes. Well. You know, it was like, you know, that whole, that whole thing, you know, that whole, I... She didn't disown her, did she? 
Yes. She did. She disowned her. I believe for so. being because her mother had become. Or they just stopped her mother became Catholic. That it was disowning her. her right. They did stop speaking because her mother became Catholic and she was a practicing Catholic and you know all that shit. Because Nicole ended up going to Catholic school and, uh-huh, and everything yeah. in church and all that crap. But it's amazing to me the lengths that women will go through mm-hmm. to appease a man. Yes. Mm-hmm. My mother. Did I say this before? I don't know. It's it's going to be. You can say it again. It's okay. But she would take me to fucking church and drop me off on Sunday. Yeah. I would go to Sunday school and to church. She would take my brother and sister and go back home. Yeah. But as we grew older, you know, I realized that I didn't I didn't really believe in any of it. Mm-hmm. So when I would say something like I didn't, you know, I didn't believe in it or whatever, she'd have a conniption, even though she never fucking went to church with yeah, me. Yeah, we were at a funeral once, and um, I remember her, like, mm. God, I don't remember whose funeral Because I wouldn't go up for communion. But you wouldn't go up for communion. Yep. And she was like, she was like. She was angry at me. Yeah, she was like admonishing you in the, at the fucking funeral. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going up. take communion. I, I don't want to. I'm not going and up And she's there. like trying to get me to tell you that you should do it. And I'm like, I'm not, he's not, I'm I'm not mm-mm. exactly, but but then she would go on a fucking vacation. You know, I, I that's fine. But you know what? I remember going on vacation like twice. Yeah, in our whole life, yeah. my, our whole life together. Yeah. And and one time was, uh, my uncle, who my biological uncle, his friend, paid for. It. You know, we went we went to this cabin and everything. Right. And of course, my sister got sick like on the first fucking day. <laughs> went to go to the hospital and everything. Your poor sister. Fuck her. I know. I, I don't remember is that if she, that's when she had her tonsils out or what. But oh wow. But she got sick. But I mean, it, we didn't have a ton of money growing up. Right. I mean, <laughs> and I. I mean, I, what's funny is that I feel like your siblings kind of have a completely different idea of what your childhood was because you have that big age for five years, four years, Yeah, the big age difference. I mean, it's not really that big, but from the time that you remember things and the things that you remember versus what your siblings remember. Yeah. I don't know if I just remember things differently. If I just remember them differently or. But of course you remember them in your own way. right? Right. Because it's, I mean, you think differently than. Your right. sister thinks you think differently than your brother thinks always. So you're always going to remember things because it's still a right. memory right, right. differently than your siblings. But your experience, the things that you remember when you're seven and and your sibling is three, three is going to be far different. Yeah. And two, two right. or one at the time. And I mean, you've even said that you've got like zero memories from before that. So, well, and my brother doesn't remember my biological father at all because he was gone by the time. Right. You know, he was old enough to remember anything. Right. I mean, the last time I saw him was, was when I was 18. So. And before that, it was like, what, 10? You know, 10, 11, something in that area. Right. Yeah. But anyhow, anyway, back to the book. <laughs> so, I mean, so she has this thing where she, she finally, uh, she comes out to most people. Um, she eventually comes out to her mother and it doesn't turn out the same way because her mother's older by this time. Right. It's like she's like 70 or something like that. Right. So it's 60s, whatever it is. But her mother's different. And but there's a lot of dark. She has a lot of dark parts. And a lot of it has to do with her her, her girlfriend. Uh, a lot of dark Did you parts almost of, say boyfriend? Yes. A lot, of, a lot of it has to do with her girlfriend and, you know, their relationship, which was um, a strained relationship for the most part. Yes. So and then. There's the 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 famous lesbian joke, and I saw that I started to read it, and I'm like, oh, Parker told me this joke before, <laughs> and I'm like, this is it, and that's what it is about the what how's it called? But it's about a U-Haul lesbian <laughs> U-Haul thing. If you've heard it before, you know what it is. The U-Haul lesbian, yeah, yeah, U-Haul lesbian. And it was what a few months, a few months, yeah, before she went, yeah, yeah. They and they moved in together. I am a total U-Haul lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> But it's really good. And and in the end, you know, her father wasn't dead. Yeah, she found her. Um, He wasn't dead. But I mean, that's all. I mean, she found her. We don't have to give it all. Yeah. You know, and and it it wasn't a happy, necessarily happy ending. No, but I, I mean, life isn't happy. It's a memoir. So life isn't happy, you know. Right. It's just her and her life isn't over, obviously. So no. happy things can still happen. But yeah, exactly. I, 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 I'm always surprised when, oh man, 
I'm always surprised when um, at the length that she goes to to not disconnect from her toxic mother. Yes, yes. Her her one sister refuses, doesn't even talk to her mother because she Cause she's a lesbian and her she, mother yeah. fucking chewed her out about being a lesbian, so they stop talking. Yeah, and the other one finds ways to just... Uh, but she recognizes the toxicity. She mm-hmm. recognizes. I mean, look, anatomy of, of a mom yes. fight. She sees all this yes. shit. She knows what and, it is. And, and, and still she just puts well, up I with it. I mean, it's provo- um, provocation leads to confusion and surprise, leads to fruitless attempt at reasoning, leads to stonewalling, leads to yelling uh, crescendo, including name calling, which leads to more stonewalling. Then mom tears up. I tear up. There's a come down, including soothing and laughter. That's one thing I have to say is that I don't think that my mother has ever called me a name. I don't think oh, she's really? ever called me a name. I mean, according to your mother, she called me a name behind my back, but I, uh, I don't think that she really has yeah, ever well, has ever. Now called that we know, name. maybe she did. Oh, I really don't think that she did. And uh, I don't know if my mother. I'm sure my mother's called me something. She called me disowned, but other than that, I know, I know she's probably called me other things. She's probably said a lot about me behind my back. Too. Oh, I'm certain that she has, but <laughs> which is but, why I saw but she so calls much her a this. selfish brat or whatever to oh, her face. Yeah, that's right. After being so shocked that this person on Dr. Laura is calling her daughter a selfish brat to Dr. Laura. Well, and that's the thing uh, that may not be the exact name, but her, it was something along those lines. Her mother, she calls her mother out about something, and then her mother says, like, like, You called me that last week. The mother's like, the, mo- yeah. the mother's like, how could a mother say that about their child? And she's like, uh, you said that about me last week. I don't remember. This exactly, is exactly, exactly what's being said, but this is the gist of it. And, and then it starts this whole fight. And then in the fight, she calls her a selfish brat. Again. Yes. Like, and then the crying and the soothing and the makeup and everything. But it's, yeah, and then it's, it's, it's on Nikki, Nicole, to, to soothe her and tell her everything's okay. And, yes, but I mean... And, like, in her apology, she's like, but you were just, you were egging me on or whatever. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. it's just always just... She uh, is... She, her mother is I would is not very put toxic. up with it. Her but, mother's very toxic, yeah. and, and she, being, there, being the, the youngest child, she probably has this thing, like, she, she needs to stay connected to her mom. Yeah, probably, I'm sure. You know? Yeah. And, you know, and she collects, she has chickens and this dog and it's a weird collection of stuff. It's Portland, though. I feel like, like yeah. it's not at all shocking to me. She and lives it's, in Portland. And it's called Calling uh, Dr. Lore because at one point in the story, she's list, she listens to Dr. Lore. And people are like, why do you listen to that conservative asshole? You know, she's she hates she hates us all, you know. But she calls her one day and she talks to her and she said it, it provided some some background that she hadn't thought of and she tried to let things go, you know? Right. She just you, tried to let it go and instead I, of, I, instead I, of beating I, her mother down and saying, why didn't you tell me about my father? Dr. Lowe was like, you know, you've gone this far in life. Just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I've kind of, I kind of took from that and kind of felt like it's time to just let shit go. Parents aren't perfect, but my mother is not anywhere near as toxic as not like mine. As no, certainly not, or, or as um as Nicole's mother. Yeah, but because if if my mother did the shit that her mm-hmm. mom, I we wouldn't talk. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, for sure. If she did it now, if she did it now, what if she did it to uh, the kids? If she if she did it to my children, no, yeah. uh, no, we wouldn't talk then. Yeah, no, certainly not. I protect my kids over everything. Yeah, I know. It's, I don't know. She would never. My my parents are amazing grandparents. And yeah. it's, it's one of the things that's that's le- that's been able to let me let go of the other shit. Yes, and some of that's recent, too. Some of that, not the grandparent part, but some of you letting go. Yeah. Just yeah, saying, yeah. saying that, you know what? It, it's not that important. Life moves on. Let's just... Yeah. Let's just forget about it. I know because we've discussed it. Yeah. And you're like, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna beat the dead horse. And well, I mean, unless you're willing to face it and and say, hey, this is what's going on, and I want like everybody grows and everybody learns from things. And you know, I think that if my mom could go back and change the way that she parented me or the way that she uh, similarly kind of well, chose you're assuming. chose a guy over her children over her child really cuz at the time my brother was was moving out and 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 starting his his own life um 
and I think that I <laughs> I would like to think now, based on how it turned out, that she would have made a different choice if she could go back and do that. Yeah. You know, I'm, we can't... I don't know. I don't but think... I'm not, I don't, I'm not willing to bring it up and talk to her about it. I don't think my not, mother would. No. Honestly. I don't, I don't think, I don't think my mother would change it. No. Nope, she so might either. change some things, like maybe... I don't think your mother has any idea that she did... I, I don't think she's willing to accept that she did anything wrong. Because my mother didn't, and until she met my stepfather, she was still married, which was like 1978. Oh, so it was right. at least, it was like over 10 years. It was over 10 years that they were just separated. Right. So, and she married him because he was going to be stability and he was going to care about us, which he did. Whereas the other guy, the other douchebag only cared about her. And she knew that. I give her credit for that. Mm-hmm. I give her credit for that, knowing that she chose us over him right. in the end. Once she had the fun and got it out. She she never got rid of all the fun. She talked to him after that. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't think you ever told me that. Uh, more than once. I don't know how often. I know she told me that he was in a bad accident. His brother oh. his brother fell asleep driving when they were in the car. Oh, shit. He had a bad accident. and He called her up one time in the middle of the night or something or Whatever it was. But yeah, I don't know how often. I, I think they, they talked a few times. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. He was also a hairstylist. He used to cut my hair. What the fuck? So he did that for me. But he was a douchebag. So. How kind of him. He was a douchebag. I hope he's dead. Wow. Um, because he didn't give a fuck about us at yeah. all. And, 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 and it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't his place. He liked my mother. Yeah. But it's something that, you know, just sits in the back of my throat. And it always has. Yeah. It always has. You know, as a kid, maybe you don't think about it as much. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, we're going to the ants for the week. You know, mom's going away. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But later on, you're thinking, you know, like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. One time, I, I probably shouldn't tell a story. If it's a bad story, you probably shouldn't. All right, I won't tell it. Um, anyway. Yeah. Back to the book. We really should talk about the book. The book is great. I love the book. Um, <laughs> Can we just I mean, keep going back? I loved it. I mean, I, it, it's, it's amazing. I don't know why. I mean, every book that we've read so far has been a really good book. Well, I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> every book that I, I've chosen so far. <laughs> you didn't choose Heartstopper. Oh, you're right. I did not. No. Oh, and that was You're amazing. right. Our previous book that we had two episodes on uh, was not a, a huge fa- uh, favorite with everybody. I like and yet it we still. dedicated two episodes to it. I like it because it was an important <laughs> topic, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to cover. Yeah. I mean, not that, not that uh, you know, you know, parental behavior is not an important topic. I think that that's a good topic oh, to man. discuss. And, and I feel like there's so much to say too that is just unsaid. And I mean, I, I, I mean, I also want to say, like, I'm, I am a big believer in if you're in a fucking toxic relationship with your family, don't fucking let it sit. Exactly. Don't let it be toxic. Exactly. It's okay to choose your family. My, my brother was toxic. My brother was toxic. Stop talking to me. And you know what? I've been just fine. I've been just fine. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yes, we, we. There's no reason you have to live in, in. I don't know why people feel that they have to. I mean, how many movies or TV shows do you see that where people feel like they have to go back for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever right. and deal with their their fucking homophobic families or racist families? Yep. They can't bring their spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend or whoever with them because their family's assholes. Yeah, you know, I mean, why? Why? Just because they they they, you know, bore you? I mean, is that? Because they're family, and that's fuck family. that. It's 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 in, not that it's important. Ingrained in Unless they got millions of dollars, you and you've got to and and you've got to stay around for your fucking share. I ain't getting shit. Believe me, I wouldn't get any now, anyhow. But my mother doesn't have anything, so there's no no way I would ever get anything. I I wouldn't stick around a toxic relationship for money either. I'm sure a lot of people do. I I I'm sure when they do too. When there's I mean, big money around. Come on. Do you think Moron. all the Trumps love their father? I, I, I can't imagine that they do. But, and I'm not saying, <laughs> anybody, like, if you are struggling and, you know, you know that when your parent dies, they're, they're leaving you money and that's, like, all you have to look forward to is their time. Well, then that's a problem, <laughs> too, if that's all you're looking forward to and you're willing to put up with all that shit to, 
on your brain. Yeah, but maybe like maybe the I I can't I can't imagine to be in that situation, so I can't say. You know what? I don't know if I could even do it. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could even do. But it. But I don't know that you would have felt that way before. It's it's really funny in your family to look at the way that I mean I don't know if funny is the <laughs> right descriptor, oh, but your family every generation has these moments of I like shunning. I mean you're really mm-hmm. like the Amish. You have this shunning. <laughs> Shun. Unshun. <laughs> Unshun. Reshun. <laughs> you really have though this 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 I don't know tradition of not speaking to parents and siblings and mm-hmm. and I think yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it I, I, so it's just like a normal thing that your family goes through. And I think that you were just like, I'm done with this bullshit. I'm, I'm not that you're shunning them, but that you are, you know, you took a step back and they thought that you would just come back and pretend like things were back to normal. And that that's what I always happen. did. Shit would happen. And then I would just, it's like, you know what? Nothing happened. Let's just go back and, you know, next. But next that's what party. all of your family does. Yes. And so this time has been different. And I think they're all just kind of waiting to see if you come uh, well, back. Well, the, the family is broken apart completely. There's my mother talks to my brother and sister, and that's it. The, yeah. The rest of the family is gone. They've all, everybody stopped talking to everybody. But it won't, but it won't continue forever. You no, because they're, like, they're all, they're I mean, all in, the time, in the time that, I, since I met you, like there was periods where, the people who weren't talking now weren't talking then. And then everybody just got back together and it was yes, like, but they're old. Happened. They're in their eighties. They're not going to, well, somebody's going to die somebody's or gonna die. And then they'll all come together and then everybody will cry and blah, blah, blah. And make jokes about needing fans where they are. <laughs> but I won't be there. I won't be there for any of them. No, nope. Um, but anyhow, calling Dr. Lore, a graphic memoir by Nicole J. Georges is a great, great read. It, it it's not a it's not a quick read. It's not something that you can sit down and read in you know half an hour. And why would you want to? It's I mean, it's, it's the art and it delves into so many things. I mean, look, we've been talking about ourselves instead of the book for half the time. Well, because talking. it it brings out all these things. Oh, here yes. it is. Here's the oh, there's the, you just happened to open the book to. The Have U-Haul. you heard the oldest lesbian joke in the book? It goes like this: What did the lesbian bring on the second date? A U-Haul. <laughs> And I use this as a way to tell you that Radar and I moved in together within a year of our first date. Not, oh, within a year. Months. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, see, it that's, wasn't too That's weeks. how much of a U-Haul lesbian yeah. I am. That I'm like, oh, what? You what? waited almost what, a whole What, you like year? me? I like you? Okay, <laughs> let's go. But anyhow. I, yeah, don't so, most people move in within a year? <laughs> you know, I, I, I could do that too. But <laughs> It's so easy. But NRE, baby. Yeah, so one of the things here is um, she, I decided to follow Dr. Laura's advice. What was, go have Christmas. You've been through enough. But her, her girlfriend, Radar, was like, these people, are, those people are horrible. Cut them yeah. off. Yeah. So she was conflicted. Yeah. Like, who do I listen to? <laughs> the right-wing conservative talk show host or my girlfriend? Yeah, and it turned out that her girlfriend was already pulling away. Right. And I, I would imagine being in radar shoes. Like you go home to visit your homophobic people, homophobic mm-hmm. family who doesn't even know that I exist. I'm just a roommate to you. Like exactly, that would pull me away yes. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would yeah. be huge to me. Yes. If it had gone on for a longer, it probably would have. Wait, what, what, what? Yes. Anyhow. Anyhow. So yeah. <laughs> if it had gone on for longer, what does that yep. mean? So, <laughs> this is a good book. This is a good book. Everyone uh, I, I it. Go out and buy it now. I recommend reading this uh, immediately. God, the art is just amazing. I just love it. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a realistic, cartoony kind of. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's good. And the story is great. Yeah. Anyhow. I like that she goes from like full page. Uh, oh, yeah. Full page to split i mean it just jumps all over the place she's mm-hmm. got to say, oh my god like look at this yeah i know it's good oh god i just love it i love every bit yeah, of it it's very good she has uh, her panels are all over the place she does all different kinds of stuff yeah she does a, a lot of different techniques yeah and it's really good it's really good yeah so anyhow um until the next episode my name is mike and i'm parker and this is the, the graphic, graphic novel, novel podcast, podcast. Thank you.
The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.